In this video, we're going to learn about Hugging Faces text embeddings inference library. So this is a toolkit for deploying and serving open source text embedding models. Let's have a look at how to use it on the Mac M1. So I wasn't able to get any of the Docker images to work. So we're going to have to clone the repository. So we'll do that. And then we're going to CD into the text embeddings inference folder. Okay, then we need to make sure we've got Rust installed and we're going to use the cargo tool to install the dependencies. And this will take roughly a minute it took to run for me. And then at the end, we'll get a line that says install the package text embeddings router and it will tell you that we've now got this executable and it should be available uh, on the path. So what we're going to do now is we're going to define a model that we're going to use. So we'll just use the one from their readme. So we'll give it the model, We'll give it the revision and then we're going to call that executable text embeddings router. We'll pass in the model, the revision, and we'll tell it to run on port 8080. And it will take a few seconds to, to run and it tells, and if you haven't got the model on your machine, it's going to download that. Notice that it tells me it's running the model on the CPU uh, on my machine. It doesn't seem to have support for Mac GPUs at the moment. And on the last line, we can see it's now ready to go. I've created a file of sentences. Uh, let's have a look at what's in there. So you can see it's the, the content of a BBC report from the BBC Sport about a football match that happened, I think it was yesterday. So I've just taken all, this, all the paragraphs and just made one sentence from each of them. We're now going to use HTTP to send a post request to the embedding server. So it's uh, localhost 8080 embed, and then we're going to pass in the inputs and we're going to use JQ to get just one value from that sentence's JSON file. And then we'll use JQ again on the results to just pull out, say, the first five elements of each embedding. And you can see it runs reasonably quickly and we've got one result. Let's now update the command to get the first 10 instead of just the first one. And we'll run that and it takes a little bit longer, but you can see there we, we go. We've got the, the first five elements of the of 10, the 10 sentences, first 10 sentences in our file. Now I wanna show how we can integrate this with Lambda index. So we're gonna open up the Python REPL. And again, we'll just run a, a quick command to load the sentences into a variable. And we'll just have a look and you can see they are <laughs> hopefully the same sentences that we just saw on the command line. Now we're going to uh, use lambda index to import the text embeddings inference class. And then we'll just instantiate that. So we'll give it the base URL. We also need to provide it the model name that we've used so that it can format things correctly. We'll give it a timeout and then we'll give it the uh, embedding batch size as well. Now let's see what happens if we use the embedding model the, the same way that we just use the uh, HTTP APIs. We can call get text embedding batch, pass in our sentences. That'll take about a second or so. And then we can then iterate through them again and get the first uh, five elements. And you can see it comes back with the uh, the five first five elements for all the sentences. Uh, so that's cool. And that's all working pretty well. But I want to show you how you would actually use this as part of a retrieval augmented generation or RAG solution. So the next thing that we need to do is create a, a vector store or, or a database that, that can store vectors. So we're going to use ChromaDB. So let's initialize that. We'll create our client. We're going to create a collection called chunks. And then we're going to create a vector store that uh, takes in that collection. The next thing we need to do is we need to create some nodes based on our sentences and the embedding. So we kind of need to put them together. Uh, and so let's import the text node and then we're going to iterate over. We're going to create a text node which has a sentence and an embedding uh, based on the sentences and embeddings that we just saw earlier. And then after we've done that, we're going to call vector store add and we'll pass in the resulting notes. So those are now in our Chroma DB. The next thing we need to do is create a large language model. So we're going to import uh, what, what Lambda index calls a service context and we're going to use the, the model Alama. So this lets you run models on your own machine and we're going to use the Zephyr model. So this is a model that is based on the, the Mistral AI. So they've added in some extra training on top of that. So let's give that a try and see how it goes. And then we're going to create our service context, which combines these two things together. Uh, once we've done that, we can now create our vector store index. So let's import that. And then we're going to say vector store index from the vector store. We're going to pass in our vector store and then we're going to pass in the service context. And remember the service context has the LLM and the embedding. So it will kind of take care of joining all those things together. And finally, we're going to create ourselves a query engine. Now we can actually ask some questions. So let's see, like one of the things in that article, it talked about how many games had, um, one of the teams had gone unbeaten. Let's, let's see if it can find that. So we're going to say uh, query engine dot query. How many games have they been unbeaten? And we get back a response. Let's just have a look what's on that response we're going to call dir response and you can see like down on the bottom we can see we've got the most interesting things are the response and then we've got the source notes 
let's just import from the rich uh, package, the print command, just to make it look, look, look a bit prettier when we print stuff out. And we'll call print response dot response. And you can see it comes back there unbeaten streak. It's five games, so that's pretty good. What we can do next is we can get the this node text and the node score for each of those source nodes. And you can see that comes back and it tells us what data did it use to get that answer. And it looks like it's got the the first uh, paragraph that it pulled out had the had the answer that we we required. Now I found in general this is this this uh, this library works pretty well, but as on this GitHub issue that we can see here, I did find that the inference time was slower than I expected it to be running on the CPU. And as I mentioned at the beginning, it doesn't seem to have support for the Mac M1 or probably M2 as well uh, GPU uh, library. Um, so hopefully. That will, that will change soon, but this is definitely a, a project to keep an eye on and I'll be hoping for uh, GPU support uh, on the Mac. Uh, if you wanna go into more detail on some of the techniques that we've used in this video, check out this other video up here where I go into more detail about retrieval augmented generation.